This is a demonstration from Freudenberg NOK Ceiling Technologies, the company that brings you the Transtech brand. In this video, we'll be testing multiple 2010-12 Ford Fusion rack and pinion units to demonstrate the functionality of the electronics. We'll then show you how to create one electronically validated unit from two or more failed units. To test the electronics, we'll be using RV Carsis in conjunction with the diagnostic tool to review parameters and DTCs. We'll begin by choosing the references in the VCARSIS and the diagnostic equipment and then running a simulation. If DTCs are present, you will attempt to clear them from the memory. In this case, we have a code of C200D motor rotation sensor. Using the diagnostic tool, we attempted to clear the DTC, but were unsuccessful as it failed to erase from the ECU memory. Using the data display feature, we're able to analyze the parameters under different speed conditions and collect more information that will aid us in repair. Starting the simulation from key in contact position and changing to engine on, we would expect the electronic motor to provide assistance to the rack and pinion when turning from left to right. Reviewing the parameters, the display shows that with the engine on, there are normal battery voltage values, acceptable engine RPMs when changing vehicle speeds, and acceptable ECU internal temperature. But despite changing vehicle speeds, the motor current remains at a constant negative 24 amps, and many of the torque sensor values are not responding. This confirms that the control module is not performing properly and requires replacement. Moving to a second rack and pinion, you'll once again test the application, checking for DTCs, and reviewing the parameters under different speed conditions. When checking for DTCs, the diagnostic tool immediately displayed DTC codes of C200B and C200C, steering shaft torque sensors 1 and 2. We'll now attempt to clear these codes. The codes failed to clear, so now it's time to review the information on the data display screen. As you can see on the display screen, there are normal battery voltage values, acceptable engine RPMs when changing vehicle speeds, and acceptable ECU internal temperature. However, amps are now near a constant zero, and many of the torque sensor values are unresponsive. Based on this information and the DTCs provided by the diagnostic tool, we determine that the torque sensor is defective. Based on the codes and conditions that both rack and pinions have provided, we've determined that one rack has a faulty motor and the other a faulty torque sensor. This can be confirmed by attaching the presumably good torque sensor cable to the validated motor, which will allow us to treat both cores as one. We will then run a simulation and attempt to clear the DTC codes from the memory. While codes were present, we were able to successfully clear those DTCs and can now review the parameters on the data display screen to ensure the cores are operating properly. Reviewing the data, you can see that all of the values are responsive. Amperes are reacting to the current consumed by the motor and the torque sensor is signaling left to right intervals while providing torque values and angles in degrees. The tests confirm that we're able to use both components to build a serviceable core. The next step is to remove the faulty motor from the previously tested rack and pinion and replace it with a validated one.
Since this video is intended to demonstrate the validation and replacement of electronics only, and not to show a full rebuild, we were careful when separating the motor assembly from the rack to prevent the ball bearings from exiting the worm drive system. Although a full rebuild was not captured during this video, we recommend that the mechanical portions of the rack and pinion be inspected and all of the ceiling components be replaced using TransTech Kit 8994. Once complete, the rack should then be tested again using the V-Carsis to ensure reliability and performance. When the motor has been assembled to the rack and pinion, you'll reconnect to the application and run another simulation to confirm that there are no DTCs present. If there are existing DTCs, attempt to clear them, then once again review the data display. When reviewing the data and turning the pinion, you can see all the values are responsive. The amperes are reacting to the current consumed by the motor and the torque sensor is signaling left to right intervals while providing torque values and angles in degrees. The test confirms that the electronics are communicating and the core is functioning. As previously recommended, the mechanical components should be inspected for defects and sealing components should be replaced. The rack should be tested under a load to ensure reliability and performance. We feel it's important for our customers to know that at Freudenberg NOK, we're not limiting our focus to just seals, but rather designing solutions. As part of our commitment to our customers, we're making efforts to provide full solutions for EPS applications. For more information, please contact your regional account manager today and see how TransTech Engineered Solutions can help you.